Chapter 24 Expanding His Ministry in Galilee Matthew 4, 23-25 Mark 1, 35-39 and Luke 4, 42 and 43 Chapter Overview Jesus tours Galilee with four disciples. His preaching and works become widely known. Jesus' day in Capernaum with his four disciples has been a busy one. In the evening, the people of Capernaum bring him their sick ones to be cured. Jesus has had little time for privacy. Now, early the following morning, while it is still dark, Jesus gets up and goes outside by himself. He finds a lonely place where he can pray to his Father in private. But Jesus' privacy is short-lived. When they realize that he is missing, Simon and those with him hunt for Jesus. Peter may be taking the lead because Jesus had been at his home. Mark 1, 36. When they find Jesus, Peter says, Everyone is looking for you. Mark 1, 37. Understandably, the people of Capernaum want Jesus to stay. They truly appreciate what he has done so they try to keep him from going away from them. Luke 4.42 However, did Jesus come to earth primarily to perform such miraculous healings? And is he to limit his activities just to this locality? What does he say about this? Jesus answers his disciples, Let us go somewhere else, into the towns nearby, so that I may preach there also, for this is why I have come. In fact, Jesus even tells the people who want him to stay, I must also declare the good news of the kingdom of God to other cities, because for this I was sent. Mark 1.38 and Luke 4.43 Yes, a major reason why Jesus has come to earth is to preach about God's kingdom. That kingdom will sanctify his Father's name and permanently solve all human ills. Jesus gives evidence that he is sent by God by performing miraculous healings. In a similar way, centuries earlier, Moses performed outstanding works to establish his credentials as one sent by God. So Jesus leaves Capernaum to preach in other cities, and his four disciples go with him. These four are Peter and his brother Andrew, as well as John and his brother James. The week before, they had been invited to be Jesus' first traveling co-workers. Jesus' preaching tour of Galilee with these four disciples is a wonderful success. In fact, word about Jesus reaches far and wide. The report about him spread throughout all Syria, into the region of the ten cities called the Decapolis, and over to the other side of the Jordan River, Matthew 4, 24 and 25. Great crowds from those areas, as well as from Judea, follow Jesus and his disciples. Many bring to him those seeking a cure. Jesus does not disappoint them. He cures the sick and expels wicked spirits from those who are demon-possessed. Questions for Review What happens early in the morning after Jesus' busy day in Capernaum? Why was Jesus sent to earth? And what purpose do his miracles serve? Who go with Jesus on his preaching tour of Galilee, and what is the response to his activities? Chapter 25 Compassionately Curing a Leper Matthew 8, 1 through 4, Mark 1, 40 through 45, and Luke 5, 12 through 16. Chapter Overview Jesus Heals a Leper As Jesus and his four disciples go preaching in the synagogues throughout the whole of Galilee, news about the wonderful things Jesus is doing spreads widely. Mark 1.39 Word of his deeds reaches one city where there is a man sick with leprosy. The physician Luke describes him as being full of leprosy. Luke 5.12 In its advanced stages, this dreadful disease slowly disfigures various parts of the body. 
So this leper is in a grievous condition and is required to live away from others. Moreover, he is supposed to call out, unclean, unclean, when people are nearby and thus protect them from coming too close and risking infection. But what does this leper now do? He approaches Jesus and falls upon his face, begging, Lord, if you just want to, you can make me clean. Matthew 8, 2. What faith the man has in Jesus, and how pitiful his disease must make him appear. How will Jesus respond? What would you have done if you were there? Moved with compassion, Jesus stretches out his hand and actually touches the man. Jesus says to him, I want to. Be made clean. Matthew 8, 3. Hard as it might be for some to believe, the leprosy immediately vanishes from the sick man. How would you like to have a king who is as compassionate and capable as Jesus? The way he treats this leper assures us that when Jesus is king over the whole earth, this Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. He will have pity on the lowly and the poor, and the lives of the poor he will save. Psalm 72, 13. Yes, Jesus will then fulfill his heart's desire to help all afflicted ones. Recall that even prior to the healing of this leper, Jesus' ministry has been creating great excitement among the people. Now people will hear about this wonderful thing that he has done. Jesus, though, does not want people to put faith in him merely on the basis of oral reports. He knows the prophecy that says he would not make his voice heard in the street, that is, in some sensational way. Isaiah 42, 1 and 2. Accordingly, Jesus gives the healed leper the order, See that you tell no one, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses appointed. Matthew 8, 4. As you can imagine, however, the man is so happy over being healed that he cannot keep to himself what has just happened. He goes off and spreads the news everywhere. This rouses increased interest and curiosity among the people. It gets to the point that Jesus cannot openly go into a city, so for a while he stays in lonely places where nobody lives. Still, people from all over come to be taught by him and to be cured. Questions for review. What effect can leprosy have on a person, and what was a leper required to do? How does a leper appeal to Jesus, and what can we conclude from Jesus' response? How does the healed man react to what Jesus did, and with what effect on others? Chapter 26 Your sins are forgiven Matthew 9, 1-8 Mark 2, 1-12 and Luke 5, 17-26 Chapter Overview Jesus forgives a paralyzed man's sins and heals him. People from far and wide have now heard of Jesus. Many travel even to out-of-the-way places to hear him teach and to see his powerful works. However, after some days he returns to Capernaum, his center of activity. News of his return spreads quickly through this city alongside the Sea of Galilee. As a result, many come to the house where he is. Some are Pharisees and teachers of the law who have come from all over Galilee and Judea, including Jerusalem. So many gather that there is no more room, not even around the door, and he begins to speak the word to them. The stage is now set for something truly remarkable. It is an event that can help us to appreciate that Jesus has the power to remove the cause of human suffering and restore health to all whom he chooses. While Jesus is teaching in the crowded room, four men bring a paralyzed man on a stretcher. They want Jesus to heal their friend. Yet because of the crowd, they cannot bring him right to Jesus. 
Mark 2.4. Imagine how disappointing that is. They climb up onto the flat roof of the house and make an opening through the tiles. Then they lower the stretcher holding the paralyzed man down into the house. Does Jesus get angry at the interruption? No, indeed. He is deeply impressed by their faith and says to the paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven. Matthew 9, 2. But can Jesus actually forgive sins? The scribes and the Pharisees take issue with this, reasoning, Why is this man talking this way? He is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins except one, God? Mark 2, 7. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus says to them, Why are you reasoning these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up and pick up your stretcher and walk? Mark 2, 8 and 9. Yes, based on the sacrifice that Jesus will in time offer, He can forgive the man's sins. Then Jesus shows the crowd, including his critics, that he has authority to forgive sins on earth. He turns to the paralytic and gives the command, I say to you, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go to your home. And the man immediately does that, walking out carrying his stretcher before the eyes of all those present. The people are amazed. They glorify God and exclaim, we have never seen anything like this. Mark 2, 11 and 12. It is worthy of note that Jesus mentions sins in connection with sickness and that forgiveness of sins can be linked to physical health. The Bible teaches that our first parent, Adam, sinned and that all of us have inherited the consequences of sin, namely sickness and death. But under the rule of God's kingdom, Jesus will forgive the sins of all who love and serve God. Then sickness will be removed forever. Questions for review. What leads Jesus to heal a paralyzed man in Capernaum? How does the man reach Jesus? What can we learn from this event about the link between sin and sickness, and what hope does this offer us? Chapter 27, Matthew is called. Matthew 9, 9 through 13, Mark 2, 13 through 17, and Luke 5, 27 through 32. Chapter Overview, Jesus calls Matthew the tax collector. Christ associates with sinners to help them. For a short time after healing the paralytic, Jesus remains in the area of Capernaum by the Sea of Galilee. Again crowds come to him, and he begins teaching them. As he walks on, he sees Matthew, who is also called Levi, sitting at the tax office. Jesus extends a wonderful invitation to him, Be my follower, Matthew 9.9. 9. Likely, Matthew was already somewhat familiar with Jesus' teachings and the works he has performed in the area, as were Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Like them, Matthew responds immediately. Matthew describes this in his Gospel, saying, At that he, Matthew himself, rose up and followed Jesus. Matthew 9.9 9. Hence, Matthew leaves his responsibilities as a tax collector behind, and becomes a disciple of Jesus. At some later point, perhaps to express appreciation for this special call from Jesus, Matthew holds a large feast at his house. Who are invited in addition to Jesus and his disciples? Well, a number of Matthew's former associates, other tax collectors, are present. They collect taxes for the hated Roman authorities.